It's not something you often hear from a leading Muslim scholar. A fatwa, a religious declaration that unequivocally states terrorism and suicide bombings are the biggest enemies of Islam. But that was issued by Sheikh Mohammed Tahir al Qadri in London. As CNN's Paula Newton reports, it's a message that many have been waiting for since 9 11. There have been other fatwas condemning terrorism. This one is different. Sheikh Qadri is a renowned Muslim scholar and has a major following. Also, his fatwa is in English, it's on the internet, and it cites the Quran to beat terrorists at their own game especially when they claim to be doing the work of Allah, or God. Sheikh Qadri cites verse 205. Allah does not like mischief and violence. That means, he says, that... Terrorism is terrorism. Violence is violence. It has no place in Islamic teachings. Stripping terrorists of their moral authority, he cites the Quran that even a sacred goal can never be achieved by following an evil or criminal path. They are leading towards hellfire. Now the question is whether the Sheikh's fatwa will have credibility on the street. Some Muslim leaders are warning that government outreach programs to battle extremism aren't working. I can't see it. I can't see it. Where, you know, where it's stopped or there's been a piece of work which actually said, right, let's stop somebody from doing this kind of, this kind of work. And others say it won't work to just try and shoot down extremist thinking. Rather, we need to have that engagement with them and need to understand exactly what their thinking is for us to be able to deal with these issues. And does a fatwa stand a chance in the face of this? <laughs> Radical preachers citing the Quran as they preach jihad against non-believers or kufar. They are what? Compassionate towards the kufar? No, they are harsh towards the kufar, and it can never be surpassed. Many say this fatwa is a real start, but it will need support from other leaders if it has any hope of winning over Muslims around the world. Paul Newton, CNN, London. And joining me now from London is Sheikh Mohammed Tahir Al Qadri. Thank you very much for joining me. Let's uh, follow on from what Paula Newton just reported. Why now and why mm. is this fatwa different than some mm. of the others that have been issued against terrorism? Sheikh Al Qadri? I, this, this fatwa which I have issued now is not the uh, first step which I have taken on this direction. I wrote a voluminous book on human rights soon after 9-11, which described and elaborated the same concept at that time. So does that, mean, published. does that mean people aren't listening, that you need to keep writing it? What makes this one different, if it is different than the others? But this was, this time I took the decision to write a fatwa as a jurisprudential ruling which should include and which has included hundreds of authorities and evidences from Quran and from traditions of Holy Prophet and classical authorities of Islamic history in order to explain that any good intention or any mistake of foreign policy of any country or any pretext cannot legalize the act of terrorism. Hmm? And terrorism and violence cannot be considered to be permissible in Islam on basis of any excuse. Okay. So I have a step here. Well, you, you've made that very clear, but who do you think is going to listen? Is it the committed extremist, the committed suicide bomber? In other words, some are complaining that your fatwa is only going to reach like-minded Muslims such as yourself and not the people who need to hear this. No, this is not the case. I would uh, divide or uh, this people whom I have addressed or those who this fatwa is going to reach into three categories. I would exclude just a very little number of those uh, radicals who have already been brainwashed and they are not ready to listen any reasoning. 
but hundreds of thousands of youth who are on the path, who have potential to be radicalized, but they have not yet reached the stage of being brainwashed. They are going to listen to this fatwa. Mm -hmm. This fatwa is going to change their mind. And then millions of other youth of Muslim ummah, they can be reached by the extremist. They can be misguided by the wrong interpretations of Islam. They can be put on the wrong track by putting the wrong concept of jihad in their minds, wrong concept of shahada in their minds. Mm -hmm. Although they are not radicals and they are not suicide bombers now, mm -hmm. but they can be misguided in future. So this fatwa is going to change their mind okay. by clarifying the concept. All right. Well, let me ask you about clarifying the concept. And you mentioned people's false ideas about what it meant. You used the word shahada, martyrdom, uh, 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 etc. We have this concept that's called a word cloud that we use. And we've used it to examine the words in your fatwa. And we can see very, very pronounced the words bombing, suicide, fatwa, terrorism, Islam. And there in the middle is the word khawarij. We looked up in the hadith and we saw the word khawarij looked up there. And of course the hadith is the words of the Prophet Muhammad as, as other people have taken down those words. And he has said there in the hadith that there will appear within my nation differences and division. People who will perfect their speech and make evil their actions. They will call to the book of Allah, yet they have nothing to do with it. Whoever fights yeah. against them has more right upon Allah than they do. So are you basically saying, are, are moderate Muslims ready to stand up against, uh, uh, sorry, are, are the um, present day terrorists like the Khawarij? No, I'm going to saying the normal Muslims to stand up against anybody or to start any kind of armed struggle. I am totally condemning the armed struggle of any kind. The basic, I am trying to clarify the concept mm -hmm. that Holy Prophet, as you explained, when Holy Prophet said that the Kharijite is a movement, this movement and the people who are Khawarij in the beginning, and they will continue till the day of judgment at the appearance of Antichrist. And Holy Prophet said they will appear and they will emerge and re-emerge at least more than 20 times in the history. And they will believe in terrorism. Mm -hmm. They will believe in mass killing. They will believe in in uh, enforcing their ideology with arms. They will believe in, in, in any kind of torturing the people so that they may bring the age, their agenda through force forward. Right. So these Kharijite people, they are declaring the whole Muslim ummah non-Muslims and they are declaring the non-Muslims as their blood is lawful to be shed. Their right. bloodshed is lawful. So, so this was the Kharijai the ideology which is continuing till today. Right. And I think the terrorists of today, no doubt about that, that they are, this is the continuity of Kharijai movement. And are these terrorists of today, are they the infidels, you know, because mostly many of them call the, the rest of the Islamic world and others, they call them the kafirs, the infidels. Are you saying now that the terrorists are the infidels? I would differentiate between the two. Those who are extremist in their views, I don't say them as Khawarij. I'm, I am declaring Khawarij those who are committing suicide bombings okay. against humanity. All right. They are committing the, yes, yes, they are committing mass killings. And their ideology and their faith is that they consider mass killing lawful. They consider the peaceful or civilian population of non-Muslim countries, killing of them they okay. consider lawful. This is the Kharijite uh, right. ideology which Holy Prophet mentioned. Okay, I want to ask you a personal question. A friend of yours, yeah. uh, a cleric, Mr. Naimi, was a close friend of yours. And he also yeah. spoke out against extremism and terrorism. There we have him on the screen. He was assassinated after issuing a verbal f uh, fatwa on national television. Are you afraid now that you've come out and made this very powerful statement? Are you afraid for your own life? I'm not afraid of any human being on the surface of earth. I am working for the good cause, for prayer of my Lord, my creator. I am working for a peaceful atmosphere for humanity. I am working to bridge up the East and West and Muslim world and the Western world 
to remove the hatreds, to remove our misunderstandings, and I am working and striving for the peace, bringing the peace back to the minds of people, to the spirits of people, while fighting against every kind of divisions and clashes. All right. So this is a good cause. I am not afraid of anybody. It depends upon whatever my Lord wants. If I oh. have to live, I will live. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I am not afraid of this. Uh, and on that Anybody note. who is afraid of these situations, he will never write these kind of fatwas. He will never declare this kind of truth is truth. One has to, one have to live for truth and to die for truth. That's and on that note, Mr. Sheikh Al Qadri, thank you so much indeed for joining us from London. And thank you very much too.